welcome, welcome to Crafty Clegs. My name is Jeanette and today I'm coming to you from the northwest of England where I live with my husband Tim and our little Shih Tzu, Zach. Today is Friday the 5th of April 2024. Um, the weather is mixed, that's what I'm going to call it, mixed. Um, it's been quite miserable and raining this morning. The clouds have cleared now. I don't know if you can see this bit of sunshine here on the wall. The clouds have cleared now and the sun's come out. Um, so yeah, it's quite pleasant now, but damp. Um, but I have just had a notification on my phone saying that we're in, um, I think it's an amber weather warning this weekend. We are going to get a new storm called Storm Kathleen. Um, apparently we're going to have really high winds. Um, to um, Cumbria, Wales, Cumbria, Lancashire, basically where we are. Yeah, so a-ho, never mind. I'm still going to stick with the saying, April showers brings May flowers. I really do hope so because I am sick to death of this weather. But that's all I'm going to say on the weather front because let's face it, it's the most depressing weather this. Um, it's not pleasant, is it? Well, it certainly isn't pleasant where we are. Our garden, um, what we're in now, the first week of April and I still haven't cut the grass in our garden because I can't. Um, it would just churn it up. It's absolutely, it's just a bog, our back garden at the moment. An absolute bog. Um, I am trying to persuade Mr. Clegg to um, get us to have, we just need to have it all paved because I don't enjoy the garden. I don't like it. And I said to him, how do you feel about having it dug up and having all paving stones? You know, just the simple paving stones, don't want to spend a fortune, having it dug up and done. And he's a bit like, Ugh. I know what he's thinking. Like, you know, I we don't want to. Well, he doesn't want to, but I do. Anyway, watch this space. Who knows? He might change his mind. But that's not what you've come here to, to talk about, is it? Right, so all through March, I did do my uh, March craft room chats. So um, if you joined me for that, thank you very much. And some of the things that you will see today, you've probably seen already anyway. But I am going to show certain things because not everybody watches the um, vlogs they just prefer a podcast. So yeah, if you have been around all March and you're seeing things that you've seen before, I do apologise, but I do have to cater for all my subscribers, as you can understand. Um, today I am drinking, I've actually brought it up because I'd have forgot. Um, I've got it in my, this is one of, another one of my favourite mugs, my Emma Bridgemore water Emma Bridgewater mugs with the Love Arts on and I am drinking a Taylor's of Harrogate Rose Lemonade fruit flavoured infusion tea and oh, I have to say I've had this before and this is really really nice and it does actually have a distinct taste of lemonade. You can actually taste the lemonade. Anyway enough of that. Um, how are y'all? Have y'all had a good week? Easter, um, Easter weekend, Easter week. Um, are, are you on holiday? Have you been on holiday? Um, yeah, what have you all been up to? Tim and I have not really had an exciting week. As in, um, we didn't go away for Easter. We spent most of Easter by ourselves. Um, our family, our Froome family, um, they spent Easter with other members of another family. <laughs> We're all big family here, but you know what I mean? They didn't come here. Um, yeah, and all the other f um, members of the family were doing other things. So it was just Tim and I, which was fine. We didn't mind. Um, Good Friday. What did we do Good Friday? I can't remember. I don't think we did anything. Um, Saturday, Sunday and Monday we didn't. I did quite a bit of crafting over the weekend, a bit of this and a bit of that. You know how you do. Um, Monday, um, so it was Easter Monday, weren't it? So I went for a walk. Um, we both Tim and I went for a walk and we just watched some movies. I did some crafting. Tim potted in his um, his workshop outside. Tim has now got a new laser. I don't know if I've told you, but he's treated himself to a new laser, a bigger one, a stronger one. 
Um, so now I am hoping that he'll be able to do me sock blockers and such like. He's still getting used to it and it takes a while. It does take a while um, for him to get used to it. He's, he's quite adverse on how to use it now because obviously he's had another one and I think they sort of all work in the same way. But because they're different settings and they're stronger settings, you have to test everything. Anyway, that's what he's been doing for the past God knows how many days he's been out there. But whilst he's out there... Um, is leaving me alone <laughs> and we all know how Mr C can be a nuisance let's face it he can be um, so that's what we did on Monday Tuesday I went to visit my aunt who is um, if you've been around a while you know this is my mum's sister um, unfortunately I lost my mum a long time ago um, my mum was 58 when she passed and I was only 29 30 um, so my auntie, which is my mum's sister, took me under her wing um, and yeah, we are very, very close, Auntie Pat and I. And I think I have told you that she's thinking of putting her house up for sale and moving to Wales. They want to move to Wales. They have family there, so they're thinking of going. Anyway, she texted me the other day and said, Jeanette, we've sold the house. Oh, well, you'd think I'd said to her, well, you'd think she'd said to me, I've cut both my legs off. I was beside myself. I was so upset. I thought, oh no, my auntie's going to Wales. And I was like this when she told me she was moving, but because she'd said she'd sold the house and it sort of felt so final, Oh, I was so upset. Anyway, I went down to visit her on Tuesday and had a good cry and she, slapped, she was laughing at me. She said, you know, I'm not going to the other side of the world. It's an hour and a half in the car. I mean, you know, your daughter lives four hours away in the car. I'm like, I know, everybody's deserting us. Um, so yeah, that was, um, it was a mixture of a lovely day, but a little bit sad because, yeah, I, I, as I pulled up to her house and pulled into the drive, it said, um sold on the sale sign oh and you, you we sort of all know how that feels really don't we um some some people love it when they've sold their house but me i hated it um so yeah we did that on i did that on tuesday so that was a bit of a you know, like i say a mixed a mixed feelings day for me um wednesday i did a lot of work stuff um when i say work stuff i mean for the shop i um ordered some new i ordered a big roll of wadding i get a, my wadding on a big roll so i ordered the, my big roll of wadding i ordered my new packaging i've got new cardboard and uh, not cardboard boxes come um bubble wrap all that kind of thing i ordered tissue so i was busy doing stuff like that on wednesday i've put a massive order in for some um fantastic needle stoppers um and then i spent a couple of hours with tim because he's the the computer guy tim um we spent a couple of hours on the computer doing the spreadsheet for the shop and stuff like that i relay in messages he does it that kind of thing so wednesday was a really boring day um and then thursday we went and did some food shopping um and i was really really tired on thursday I had a sleep in the afternoon. Me and Nanny Naps, we like that now, me and Nanny Naps. We love it. <laughs> so, yeah, yesterday we did food shopping. I had a Nanny Nap. I did a little bit of housework. Um, I did a little bit of sewing, a little bit of knitting. And then Friday, here we are again. How quickly does a week go by? Um, Tim has still not sorted his glasses. He's decided now that we're going back and the, the guy at the opticians was very, very nice. Um, it, it is the, beside the cells that they can't get them right. But yeah, there's just, he's got, is it called a stigma in one of his eyes, Tim? And it's really causing him, well, I don't know what it's causing him, but it's causing him not to be able to see. But I got my new glasses from the same place. And I have to take mine back. Oh, this is terrible. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. And excuse me, squinting. But Tim and I, let me put my glasses on while I explain. <laughs> Tim and I, over the past seven months, and it's a lot of money this, um, has spent £700 on two pair of glasses. Now, with when they're not right, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Now, these glasses of mine, I didn't know, but these are called Ray-Bans. So the frames are ray band but can you see how all the paint's coming off that side and it's all coming off this side? And I said to Tim, that is terrible. I mean, I've had these, I think I got them in September last year 
And if you turn to the side, Tim said you can see it all peeling off. It doesn't look very nice. So I'll have to take mine back as well. Oh, they'll be sick and tired of seeing us, won't they? Oh, dear me. Anyway, um, without further ado, let's get on. So I have got absolutely... Well, when I say no finish obje objects, I have. And I'm going to do this first and get it out of the way quickly um, because I showed them throughout the month of March. But for those of you that didn't watch me in March and just watched the podcast, I'm going to quickly show you. I am making the Arne and Carlos Advent Sweaters. And in, in March, I did my first three. So I'll show them to you now. So there is number one. It is done in sheepy stone wash and I used a three millimeter needle. This is number two. You can't really see it very well, but you know what, I don't care. And this is number three. And again, you can't really see the number very, very well, but again, I'm not bothered because it's the, it's the making them that I wanted to do. But I'm really, really pleased with that. Now I know certain colors don't contrast, I will, um, obviously pick wisely next time one lady did um one of my subscribers did make a suggestion and said put the graph in black and white and you will see which was a good idea which will stand out more anyway so them are my Arne and Carlos sweaters I'm not going to go into, into much detail with them because like I say I made them throughout March I've got them in one of the wool warehouse um hessian bags and I've picked out my colours for this month and I've not started um, number four yet, but I have to do three a month between March and November and then I'll have all 24 for November for Advents, which I'm really, really looking forward to. I didn't know what I was going to do with them, whether I was going to hang them on my fireplace downstairs or have them in the craft room and I've decided I'm going to have them in the craft room I'm going to I always do vlogmas so I will probably do very much what I did in March just a chatty vlogmas obviously if we go out I'll take you um but yeah I thought I'd hang one up every day um for you to see so yeah that is my Arne and Carlos advent sweaters Everything I talk about today, I will leave in the description box below for you so you can find them. I'll just turn over my page because I have made notes in my book. How professional am I? Not. We all know we're not professional. I'm not professional. But talking of Advents, I've been very, very naughty. I have ordered two Advents. I've ordered one. Now, this is terrible. Um, and I'll put it on the screen, but I can't remember the name of the person that I've ordered it off, but it was the colours that attracted me. They're so bright and it's like, I think it's unicorn in the name. Don't quote me on that because I'm recording and I don't know, I can't have a look, but like I say, I will put it on the screen. But you you um, can pay for it um, monthly. So I... It's £12, I think it's £12.50 a month and it's free postage and packaging. And I think you get your, like I say, March through to November and then you've got it. So I'm really looking forward to that. But I really, really, really pushed the boat out. And I decided when they came out, it's not like me this because I don't normally do knitting advents because I don't normally do them. But I just... You know, when you've you, you've seen something so many times and you really, really fancy trying it, but you think, oh, it's just too expensive, I can't. Anyway, I just, after Christmas, when, the, well, it didn't come out after Christmas, I think it was February, and I saw them and I thought, I am having it. And I have purchased my advent calendar this year from Dandelion and Dogwood. Oh, I was so excited when I saw it. It is Barbie. Oh, and I just thought, that is it. And I decided to just go for it. So I've gone for the full advent. I've got 24 advents, a 100 gram skein and a bag. I just thought I'm having it. I'm treating myself. And before I could change my mind, I taught myself out of it. I pressed that button. So yeah, I've got two advents ordered already. But I will be having my toft one without a shadow of a doubt. I always, I have to have that. Anyway, so that's advent news. Um, this podcast is obviously going to be all over the place. <laughs> Right, so let's start with my emotional chicken. Right, so I 
got on the bandwagon with everybody else and I am making the emotional chicken. It's actually almost done. And if I'd have really got my finger out yesterday, instead of flicking through Instagram, watching silly movies and going on YouTube, watching paper crafting uh, tutorials, I'd have probably got this done. But I have got the emotional chicken. I've got actually got both of these patterns. I've got a knitted one and I've got a crocheted one, which very... Um, a subscriber very, very kindly purchased for me. So thank you very much. I'm not going to mention any names, but you know who you are. So thank you for that. Um, so I've tried the knitted one first. Why I decided to do the knitting one first, I don't know. Anyway, I have actually finished the chicken. Here is the chicken. That way, can you see it better like that? So this is the emotional chicken. Now, I actually found it quite okay to crochet, uh, to knit, to be fair. I thought when I saw all these wraps and turns, I thought, oh, that looks really complicated. And I do it all the time. I know I do because I've been told. I talk myself out a bit before I've even began. So I thought, just get on with it, try it. And if you can't do it once you've tried it, then that's it. But yeah, I didn't find it difficult at all to do. So this is the chicken. It's not it, this is how it looks. You knit it flat. It looks quite bizarre, doesn't it? Um, so this is the body. This that I'm using, and I haven't got the ball band, which is not like me because I always save ball bands, but I haven't, I haven't, which is really, really unusual because I always do. So this yarn that I'm using here, it's a double knit, um, and I am using a sheepies. No, it's not sheepy. Sorry, let me start again. I am using a Stylecraft Batik Swirl. So that is one side of it. And then that is the other side of it. So it's mostly red here. I mean, it's a shame, really, that this wasn't on those two there as well, because that would have been perfect, wouldn't it? it? You'd have just thought I'd have done it like that. But anyway, never mind. So this is a Stylecraft Batik Swirl and this with the contrasting colours is a Sheepies Merino. And again, I have a, I've got the ball here, um, but I haven't got the ball band. And that's how far I've got with that. Like I say, if I'm going to be totally honest with you, I haven't loved it. It's not been my favourite make. And I'm going to do the crocheted one because I've got two granddaughters and I want to give them one each. So I am going to do the, the crocheted one. But will I make it again? Probably not. Might do, but probably not. And I am now on for the um, underbelly. I don't know what you call that bit underneath the chicken. Um, but I this is how far I've got. Not very far. I'm not a very fast knitter. I never, ever have been. I remember um, my mum and was a, an extremely avid knitter and I used to really get on her nerves. She used to say to me, Jeanette, try and speed up. Can you not do it any quicker? My mum was one of those that she used to be able to knit like this. My mum was an avid knitter and so fast. She'd knit like this and this is how quickly her hands would be moving and she'd be talking to you like that and watching the telly and every now and then she'd uh, read a couple of books. Oh, and she used to say, I feel like I want to get hold of your needles and do it for you because I would be like, knit one, pearl one, knit one. And she'd be like this, there'd be sparks coming off her needles. So yeah, I'm not a very, very good um Oh, not a very good, a very fast knitter. Um, the beak and the wattle is going to be, this is the what I use for the beak, so that's finished. And the wattle is um, red, and that is Stylecraft Special DK. So that's that. So let me have a sip of this. Um, next up is my car knitting socks. Uh, they are in my little Erdy bag that I made now the only reason i've brought these in out of the car is because i need to do the toe um i've got one sock almost done let me just push it down i've got one sock almost done now so there you go that's the sock and now i need to do the toe and i'm going to do um is it called an umbrella toe 
I am going to do the umbrella toe. This is um, West Yorkshire Spinners and it is Colourway Pigeon. Isn't it lovely? Um, I did a shadow wrap heel, two by two. This is my own recipe. Um, this is what I've made up. It's taken me a while to get one that's right for me, but I now have. Um, I've done a two by two rib. Um, I don't know how many rows. I just carried on until it fit me. And the next one, I'll carry on until it matches that one. Then I'll do my shadow wrap heel. And I think I might need to do like that. I think I might need to do, um, oh, actually, no. No, did I, did I measure it and it was right? I was going to say, I think there was another two rows I had to do. I'm not really sure. But from here to here, it's right for me to start my toe now. So that's why I've brought this out of the car. Because I need to do the, the um, umbrella toe and then uh, Kitchener. And I can cast on for the second one. So that's how far I've got with my car knitting. So that's one pair of socks. Um... My next thing I'm going to show you, oh, I'm excited about this. So I did show you this throughout March. Um, I, in, I think it was February, when um, Alex and Danny from My Yarny Corner did their birthday bonanza. I think in February, Alex and Danny, the family combined, I think they've got quite a lot of birthdays and they always do a birthday bonanza. Excuse me, and they did, sorry for the rustling, but it's in the bag. They did um, a little mini skein set for scrappy projects, and they're all in here. I'm not doing it in any particular order. When I've got my amount of rows that I'm doing, I just put my hand in, pick another one out. So there's all these here. Oh, and it's such nice yarn. And I told you that I was going to cast on on Easter Sunday, which I did do. Sat there in Easter Sunday afternoon and I even had a glass of wine. And these are the Little Rabbit Socks by Jules Hill of So Sweet Violet. Can you see them? I've never, ever, I think I've tried a toe up once and I didn't get very far. But I persevered and I've managed it. So I have now just changed, let me just show you, my fourth colour. So I don't know what Jules calls this toe, um, but I've just changed onto the blue. It's a really, really nice pattern. Um, it's really good to follow. Um, there is, is tutorials. So if you've not done, let me tell you what this heel's called. This toe's called. Right, so you use Judy's... Um, I mean, it's a paid-for pattern, so I don't want to tell you too much. Oh, it's Jules, Jules's beanie toe. That's what it's called. Oh, it's raining again now. Jules's beanie toe, and you use Judy, Judy's magic cast on. And there's tutorials to watch from Jules. You can go onto Judy's Magic Cast On and do that. And honestly, it, I don't know why I was worried about me not being able to do this. Um, because I, I really enjoyed doing these. So that is how far I've got with my first sock for Easter. My little rabbit socks. And then, um, once you've turned the heel and you go up the back you have these little bunny rabbits tails and I've got what it says in the pattern the drops alpaca boucle and that is just to make the little bunny tails on the back of the socks so yeah I'm going to have little bunny tails really pleased with it really really pleased but there is just about that much yarn left over let me just see if i can hold it up and can you see it um which is a shame to throw away i think because it's such nice yarn now i have always wanted to try and make um the battenberg blanket by che by sandra of cherry heart um and i've never really i don't know i've never really tried um, where's my wool? Bear with me a sec about that, I'm back. So I, 
I've never really tried. So one, when there was these bits of yarn left over, I sat there the other day and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try one of the squares that um, the Battenberg blanket is made out of. And it's just a solid granny square like this. Can you see that? Um, it's a free pattern on Sandra um, Cherry Heart. I will leave the link to it down below. So it's a free pattern. So I'm not showing you anything I shouldn't be. Um, so I did one from the green. So this was the first one I used. This was that toe. So that was what was left over from that. So I managed to get one out of that. And that was what was left over of that one. So I managed to get that out of that. And then there's this yellow here, which feels a bit smaller. So whether I'll be able to get one out of that, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, every time I finished a stripe, I'm going to stop and I'm going to do a solid granny square and just collect them. Um, and then last time I went out with Karen to um, Black Sheep, I had a look around because I wanted a solid white or an off cream to go with them. So I decided the, to get the Serdar Classic, the Serdar Country Classic, and it's just a four ply. Um, and I think it's 50% acrylic and 50% wool. So this is um, 75, 25, but they'll mix okay for a blanket. So I decided, where is it? Those are, it's a nice contrast that for any, I think. So that's what I decided to get. So I got just three of those. Um, and I'm just gonna do them. I'm not going to stress over it. I'm just going to do a little square every now and then. And when I've got maybe eight or ten, I'll start adding them all together. Just do them in a row like that. And that is what I've decided to do. Because I hate just throwing away that much yarn. And I know it's only a tiny bit and you've got your sock stripe out of it. But what a shame I, I, to throw that away with such, you know... When you can do this and actually get a second garment out of it. I know I'm going to need a lot more of these, but believe you me, I have got a lot of these little bits hanging around. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing with that. I just thought I'd... Um, and I've got a little pocket in my bag. Um, this is a project bag that um, lovely Elise sent me from Elise Rose Crochet. Um, she sent me this for testing. I test crocheted the piglet pig for her there can you see um oh no i didn't i bought pig i test crocheted the cat and then she sent me this and a ball of yarn as a thank you right so them are my socks by jules hill little rabbit socks i feel like i've been waffling on and on and on so i'm sorry if i have but it's probably because i haven't done a sit down podcast for a while um, I feel like I need to tell you all, all these bits and pieces. Um, the new um, pattern came out today for the Rika Rumi Crochet Along. I'll show you that in a minute. I was so upset last Friday. I, I'm like, why is it not out? And then I remembered, I thought, oh, it's Easter. It did actually say that we'd be having a break, break at Easter and there'd be no pattern release. Oh, it was really sad. Excuse me. Right. So the next thing, and again, I'm going to show you pretty quickly because you've already seen these. And again, it's taken me ages to do, but I don't care um, because I love them. These are the Bifeld Mittens by Amy Loudon. It's not a good picture, this really. It's a lovely picture of Amy, but not a very good picture of the mittens because I don't know if you can see them. Can you see them there? Anyway, I am making these for my daughter. Obviously, the weather's getting better now, so there's no rush. I have finished mitten number one. It looks very, very long, doesn't it? But it's a high, it goes quite high up on your wrist. Um, so this is mitten number one. Obviously, I've got to put the thumb in, but I'm going to do both thumbs at the same time. I shall put it on and model it for you. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, I think it is. Look at that isn't that lovely um i dyed this yarn for katie it is um a 75 25 and i called it eat your greens <laughs> it just reminds me of cabbage i don't know why 
but it does it just reminds me of cabbage so that is the first one and i started the second one and i've got to the first bobble so yeah that's another thing that i need to finish these are my um needle stoppers i've got these in my shop that are no these are the highland cows i've got quite a few in oh I have just ordered some fantastic needle stoppers. Um, hopefully they will be here next week. I ordered them yesterday, so hopefully they won't take too long to come. Um, so that is um, mitten number two. And that is being held double. Let me just show you so you can see. With the Eat Your Greens and floof. Just a plain floof, undyed floof. And it is in my bag by my lovely friend our bestie dawn from the woven almanac look at that isn't it gorgeous i love this and it's got a soft bottom it's got a velvety bottom and there's her um tag so we've got that on the go and then last but no means least is my toft doll. I'm still working on it. I'm just doing a bit of everything and loving it. So um, I am making um, Ed's, I am, well, I was, I'm not anymore, but last year I was in Ed's Dolls, Ed's Dolls Club. Um, I've cancelled the subscription for this year because it just, I've got this one to do and I think another three and it was just getting too much so I've cancelled it but I am in the middle of making Beatrix Potter. She's actually called Helen Beatrix Potter. She was born on the 28th of July 1866 and died on the 22nd of December 1943 in Lancashire in England. So here his uh, body. All done. I have done two legs, two legs, Ta -da! <laughs> wait, now just wait everybody until you see this. Now last time I made a doll, we all know um, where is she? She's up there, cabin girl. We all know how Jeanette messed up with cabin girl's hand. Well, I took it slow and steady. Are you ready? I was thrilled with this. Ta-da! Look at that. She has got five fingers. Look. Oh, I'm thrilled. So I've only done one arm. Um, yeah, so that's one arm with her perfect hand. And then I fancied doing a piece of the clothing. Now, this is her shawl. This is the shawl. This needs blocking, so I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to block that. Um, so next, I'm going to do her other arm, and then I'm going to construct a body and a face. And then I'll finish her clothes off and then we'll do her hair and hopefully. she. I have got the hat, the straw hat here. It's just, is it still there? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but it's hanging on one of my, my um, what's this called? Deer, reindeer's antlers. So that's that. And that is just in one of my Emma Ball. I love this bag. Emma Ball bag that I got. Love the lining, red and white striped. And I got this from Black Sheet Wools. So that is what I'm working on at the moment. But I am very tempted to start something else because I've seen something else. And let me just tell you, I'll put a picture here. It is by, um, oh, Pebble. Oh, I want to say Pebble Dot Pebble Knits. I'll put the name on the screen. Now, if you've got to be quick about this, because this is a free pattern just for 24 hours and it's um, a bear. I'll put the picture up on the screen. I've already bought the wool for it and I'd really like to start this. So I might be starting this maybe tonight, who knows? Um, 
I'm terrible at starting at the moment. I'm not getting anything finished, but I'm terrible at starting. But it don't matter, does it? So that's Beatrix Potter. Um, and I might start um, Piglet and Winnie the Pooh. And it seems to be all knitting. I seem to be doing an awful lot of knitting just recently. Apart from Beatrix, most of the things that I'm doing are knitting. Anyway, um, I think that's it. Oh no, Marie Karumi for this week. Just let me show you. So this week's creature is Oscar the Otter Fisherman. That's this week's. And again, this is a free pattern. So if you're interested, you can head on over to um, Rico, uh, Rico Rumi's website and it's a free download. So that is what's next. And there's quite a lot of different colours in it this time. So we've got four... Seven colours. Let's see if I can hold them all up so you can see them. Bear with me. There's seven colours. So we've got orange, pink, cream, blue, beige with gold in it, gold in it, and then black in the middle and navy there. So them are the colours for Oscar the Otter. Aren't they lovely? So we've got that. So I need to start that as well. Don't want to get behind with these, but these don't take me too long. I'm in two minds whether to do this. Don't really know if I want the fish. I'll do otter first and then see. It just, I don't know. I think to myself, what will I do with this? But then it's part of the, the crochet along, isn't it? So yeah, I might not be blooming miserable and just get on and do it. And he's got like a little fishing, um, fishing rod there. Oh yeah, I need to do them, don't I? Maybe I'll just do one. Anyway, we'll see. Watch this space. Um, and I think that's it. I am in the middle of doing some bags. Um, I've had a bit of a, I don't know, I'm trying to do something that's a little bit different, but it's really, really hard because, you know, there's only one, one way you can make a drawstring bag. It's all to do with the type of fabric that you use. I have got quite a lot of fabric to make some um, patchwork that I wanted to do, but I've also got, I had a thing... Oh, a few weeks ago um, about ticking. Um, so ticking and cork. Anyway, I've made a bag. I've made a couple of bags. I'll show you. They're not finished. And I don't know when I'll be doing a shop update. Um, probably sometime next week. I don't know. But I thought I'll make one of these and see how it turns out. And I'm actually really pleased with it. It's not finished yet. It's got to have the string in. But look at that. I thought that was really nice. So this is a cork fabric and then a ticking. And then I've got like a red... Uh, not a red, what am I talking about? A blue star like this for the drawstring and the lining, isn't that nice? Well, I think it is. And I've got a red one to do. So exactly the same as this, only red. They're all over here, all the bags. I've still got some of the bunny fabric that I've got to make up. So I've made that, which I thought was quite nice. I love this, absolutely love it. But it's a big one. And again, this isn't finished because it's got to have the drawstrings in. But this is a big bag, this. This is sweater size. Look at the teddy bears. Oh, I love them. But because I've got this furry, I've made some things already in my shop with this. But this is a big size. This would be good for um, a sweater. And then it's got this really nice, like beige, little like stripy lining inside so yeah I'm, I'm having a a bit of a a mixture of bags at the moment so yeah watch this space see what happens um right so with that said i'm going to go i don't know what we're doing this weekend what day is it today friday so yeah i don't know what we're doing this weekend i'm really hoping we can get out and do some walking but this rain is I mean, I, I am going to go out now for a walk. I fancy a walk. I fancy just to get out and, and have a walk and, you know, get a bit of fresh air and clear your head a little bit. I mean, it isn't raining now, so, yeah, I should stop this podcast now and stop waffling on to you <laughs> um, and get out and walk. Um, right, well, before I go, I just wanted to say, and again, I don't want to mention any names because I don't know if you want me to, um, but I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you excuse me, to everybody who has bought us a coffee 
and a special thanks on YouTube. What I do with that money, I save it up and then whenever Tim and I go out together, we always enjoy a really nice coffee. So thank you very, very much for um, the special thanks and the coffee the coffee in my coffee shop. It, I really, really do appreciate it. It means ever so much. It just means that you're enjoying what you see, which makes me feel better. Right, so like I say, everything will be down, down in the description box below where you can find me around the internet, everything I talk about today. And um, I shall be back again next Friday. Um, if anything exciting happens in the week and I want to show it, yeah, I'll come back and show it you. Yeah, but yeah, we'll see. Watch this space. Okay, so have a lovely, lovely weekend and I'll see you very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.